Thank you, Mr. Chair. After two months of Conservatives advocating for small businesses that were being left behind by this government yesterday, we finally received word from the Liberals that the Canada Emergency Business Loan would be expanded to include employers that pay their employees with contracts and dividends. Hallelujah for small businesses, Mr. Speaker. But despite the praise from the Ottawa Press Gallery, many businesses are still being left behind, like my constituent Svetlana, who owns a hair salon that has been shut down for months. She needs the commercial rent assist, but her landlord refuses to sign up for the program. Will the government expand and streamline the commercial rent assist, or will they continue to ignore business owners like Svetlana? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, yes, yesterday was a great day that we continued to expand the SEBA program to support businesses across the country. We have been listening to businesses how we can support them, and we will continue to find ways to support all Canadians, workers, and businesses. This is a very difficult time, and our government has put forth many programs in a very short period. So we will continue to work on these programs and focus on Canadians. The Honourable Member for Kildonan and St. Paul. Which is an answer, Madam Chair, as it is self-praise. But let's try again. James is a restaurant owner in my riding that has had sales decline by 65%, just short of the 70% threshold required to receive the commercial rent assist. A 65% decline is devastating to him and his employees, but just not devastating enough for the Liberals to throw him a bone and help him with his rent. Why does the Liberal government continue to pick favourites and exclude thousands and thousands of businesses across Canada with arbitrary red tape? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And I want to again raise the fact that since day one, our government has been focusing on Canadians, on workers, on businesses. We have many programs to support Canadians, workers, and businesses. And just yesterday, we expanded again our SEBA program to uh, make available dividends and contracts for businesses. Yeah, yeah. So we will continue to look at the gaps and work with all members in the House to see how we can make sure we make those programs available for Canadians. Yeah, yeah. Member for Kildonan and St. Paul. Yet again, Madam Chair, a longtime chiropractor in my riding is using personal banking account rather than an additional business banking account, and they aren't eligible for any government programs as a result. Why does this Liberal government believe businesses that are like this are undeserving of their support and that others, like the 200,000 fraudulent CERB claimants, are deserving their support instead? Why is that? The Honourable Minister. Thank you again, uh, Madam Speaker, and through you, I want to raise the fact that, yes, we know that uh, we need to find potential solutions to help business owners and entrepreneurs who operate through their personal bank account and have not yet filed their tax returns, such as newly created businesses. We have expanded the SEBA program yeah, yesterday yeah. by making available dividends and contracts and we will continue to work with all members of Parliament and businesses to find ways to support them through this difficult time. The Honourable Member for Kildonan and St. Paul. Madam Chair, that's not an answer yet again. Businesses in my riding are waiting for a response, and this is all that they're hearing. It's despicable. So no answer yet again, and the list of perfectly legitimate businesses that are falling through the cracks continues to grow, and the employees that depend on these jobs are seeing their opportunities evaporate along with them. Canadians are seeing their favourite neighbourhood businesses go bankrupt and close permanently. And all this Liberal government has told them is, sorry, you're not eligible. Further, this government has spent over $200 billion in debt on the pandemic response effort, and yet they refuse to allow Parliament to operate effectively. They won't even release a financial update. It's ridiculous. Instead, we have this pale shadow of what Parliament once was, with a fraction of the accountability it once had. Canadians have a right to know the damage that's been done and the magnitude of the decisions happening now. Those answers should come from Parliament, just as they always have for over 150 years, Madam Chair. And although the other parties seem happy to avoid their responsibilities to Canadians, the Conservative opposition will be here fighting to hold the Liberal government to account every chance we get. It is our duty to Canadians, Madam Chair, and I'm honoured to contribute to that effort relentlessly on behalf of my constituents. Honourable Minister. Oh, the Honourable well, yes, Government House Leader. Speaker, well, the, the government is answering questions every day. Actually, the equivalent of, of seven QP, seven, seven times 45 minutes instead of five times 45 minutes. Way more. It, why? Because it's extremely important for us, for the government, to answer important questions from the opposition, and we'll keep doing that, Madam Speaker.